blemished record on the line. Oh, hey, King from Bruce. The Rat Gregorian just put Jimmy in airplane mode. And then knee kicks as well. Chauncey has him wobbled. What a front kick there for Koprovinsky. Specialist. Dong Fantas! It's a knockdown for Blue! Two and all! Yeah. The right hand drops! Aggressive with his hands and just again! Back lift! Oh! There's a good stand right here! Glory made its annual visit to China for the third time and second consecutive in Shenzhen. The Shenzhen Nanshan Sport and Cultural Center played host to Glory 73. Ten fights in all was some of Glory's best action of the year. On this edition of Glory of Rewind, China we'll highlight five fights, four of which ended inside the, the distance, there. including the battle for the lightweight championship of the world. We begin with featherweight action between number seven ranked Tong Fairtex and China's Chuanlin Zhao. Let's see if Tong Fairtex can continue his winning ways here in glory, or if Shanglin Zhao can win in his glory debut. You're gonna see the, the distance control that Fairtex has. He knows his range really well, can slip out of punches, uses his clinch and knees in mid-range. Ooh, that head kick almost landed right away. Yep, he looks for body kicks usually, so he's mixing it up now. That's some of the success that experience in kickboxing can do for you. Tong Fairtex is listed at five foot nine. It looks like about four of those feet are all legs. And he's got 93 professional fights, and he says he's still a little nervous when he fights in glory. He says the fast pace of kickboxing he's still getting used to. And of course, Muay Thai fighters usually struggle when making the transition to kickboxing with their boxing and especially with their defend, defending with their hands. And that's something Tong has tried to work with. Yep, work he around. says he's always working his boxing. But if his style's working with his distance control, he doesn't really have to rely on the clinch. Just like that. That's good improvements there. Nice low kick there from Zhao. Fairtex will exchange kicks with him all day long. Ooh, nice straight left for Tong. Yep, Zhao really coming in too with his power punches. The strategy for Zhao is he can't just sit there and let Fairtex let that left kick go. He has to step in and try to throw that right straight. I'm really liking the way Fairtex is mixing levels with the left kick. Always calm, always relaxed, and then just explodes. Both of these athletes, 23 years old, early in their careers. Well, I don't know if I should say early for Tong, who's already had 93 pro fights, as you mentioned. Started fighting as a boy. In Muay Thai in Thailand, you've heard of fights happening between nine-year-olds before. Fairtex now kicking and then following with his punches. Those are all little improvements that we're seeing him as he gets more comfortable with the, the stand-up glory fighting. Now Egan, Egan him on. He's pumped. He just wants to get in there and fight. There are some fighters, that, even football players, some guys need to be hit to get motivated. Yeah, wake up. Tong being a little more patient than perhaps we thought. Yeah, but I, I like the way he's actually using his boxing in this fight. You know, when some fighters try and show you, quote unquote, what they've learned or been working on, they try too hard to show you that and they end up losing rounds. Break! Break! You remember Stop. famously Ronda Rousey would wanted to show off her boxing skills yeah. against Amanda Nunes. That didn't turn out too well. Nope. Fight! So round two. And there is open scoring as we talked about earlier. We'll see what the judges thought of round one. Now Fairtex already coming out more aggressive. He won the first round on all five judges' scorecards. Nice left and right for Zhao. 
Yep, that's what Zhao needs to do. Bring the fight, bring the pressure. Oh, watch Ooh. out, he kicked him while he was down. Paul Nichols is gonna think about this one for a minute. We'll see if he deducts a point. Neutral. Okay. <laughs> okay, you understand. Grounded, do not attack. Well, I don't think Chow okay? speaks English, but I think he understands yeah. what he did wrong. Time in. He knows. Fight! He is amped, though. He must have pounded about eight Monster Energy drinks before getting in there. Ooh, Fairtex now more aggressive. He was a little upset. Well, I think he's just angry, Joe. Both of them are. Break! Well, Jow's here to fight. Fight! You can't sit there and play that kick for kick game with Fairtex. You got a scrap. Jow busier, Fairtex more accurate. Jow called this one of the crowning achievements of his career, getting to fight in glory. He says it's the ultimate platform, and he's not going to leave anything on the plate. No one's been able to figure out Tong in three glory fights. Fight! John Lin Zhao from the Henan province of China. Straight left there from Tong. Did a nice little stance switch to land that punch. But you're right, this seems to be the blueprint. Yep, you got to bring the fight. Don't make it technical. You really have to make it a fight. <laughs> Look at that head movement. Oh, a big right hand for yep. Zhao. Zhao's signature strike is that straight right. Break, break. And that's the best strike to throw you versus a left stop kick. Holding. Fight. And traditionally, they say time, step outside time. the lead foot to Neutral. throw that straight right. Better Yo. path to the head. Over there. Zhao fights out of the legend fight gym. Says his style is a mix of Sanda and Muay Thai. Tommy, fight! Coming in on a three-fight win streak, this would be the biggest win of his career. And now he's trying to feint. He probably wants Fairtex to kick so he can counter. Good strategy from Zhao. It's almost like Zhao is willing to get kicked, and he's sitting down. Is it a knockdown? It is! For the first time in his career in glory, Tong goes to the canvas. And Nichols won't Three, start counting until he's in the neutral four, corner. Five. Six, seven, eight. Wait, gloves up. Zhao is electricity. Fight. He's coming right back after oh. the tight fighter again. Cut him a straight right, and another one. And Tong is down again, and they'll wave it off. A stunning upset here in Shenzhen. What a finish, and it was all in those straight punches. He knew he had to land it, and that's the best strike to throw against that southpaw left kick. That amped up style got him that TKO. John Lin Zhao, what a performance. He didn't back down, he was not intimidated, and he picked up his career best victory here tonight. Yeah, as a huge underdog as well. No one expected that, but emotion, energy, ferocity. He just stood there, took those kicks, got comfortable with it, and then landed those strings. This is Shin Long Zhao, knockout or knockdown number one. Yeah, right off of the kick. And the strategy was to try to use those straight punches. But as soon as he clinched up, that's where the, the experience of boxing has to happen. You see Fairtex wanted a clinch, but Zhao kind of fought out of that and threw those hooks as Fairtex was trying to clinch. And then all of a sudden, Zhao found the right hand, threw two of them back to back, and got the finish. One, boom, two. Paul Nichols must have seen something in his eye. He immediately waved it off as Sean Lin Zhao improves to 24 and 6 and gets his 12th professional KO. Ladies and gentlemen, with two knockdowns in one round, this bout comes to an end by way of the tournament maximum knockdown rule with an official time of 2 minutes 22 seconds of the second round. 根据锦标赛比赛规则，同一回合累计击倒两次将会被判为TKO。根据官方判定，第二回合两分二十二秒TKO。Your Your winner by technical knockout, Chuan Lin Zhao。李志明先生们，掌声送给赵传林。with the victory, Zhao won for the 24th time against six losses while delivering Tong Fairtex his first glory loss. 
We're just getting started on Rewind. Marat Gregorian! Still to come, Marat Gregorian looks to defend his lightweight belt against undefeated Elvis Gashi. But up next, other lightweight action when Vlad Tuanov takes on Bruno Gazzani. This is Glory 73 Rewind. Welcome back to Rewind. Vlad Tuanov of Russia took his 42-4 record into the glory ring against 64-6, Bruno Gazzani of Brazil. Ready? Fight! Bell rings, Bruno Gazzani in the black gloves, Tuanov in the white. Let's see if they respect each other's power. Front kick there for two and off, nicknamed the Diamond. Level changes for two and off. Hit the body, go upstairs. Fight! Two and off, 42 and four. An incredible amount of fights for a 21 year old that's not from Thailand. Ooh, nice spinning back kick right to the abdominal area. Let's see if Bruno Gozani is protecting that liver or not. Seems to be tucking that right elbow nice and tight. So I think that spinning back kick did some work. Right on the ear, off coming out firing. Good counter kick from Gozani to off balance Tuanov. Did you prefer it when your opponent would come right at you, Joe, or did you want him walking backwards? Well, I'm a pressure fighter, so I make them go backwards. Nice right. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're exchanging now. Yeah, two and off landing much cleaner shots, at least with a hand so far. I like the way he's mixing his kicks, too. Hard left hook there from two and off. Tuanov still trying to throw a lot of spinning attacks, Joe. Looks like if he just turned this into a boxing match, he'd be in really good shape. Yeah, I, just, I do like that he's mixing it up, though. It'll help him land his punches. If Bruno's so focused on the hands, it opens up the legs, opens up the body. Fight! If I'm Gazzani now, I'm going to start kicking a little bit more. Defend the head, use my shell guard, and kick away. Gazzani walking right into the line of fire, but that's all he knows. He's been doing it for 71 professional fights, 32 KOs. Almost a 50% knockout ratio. Good knee there from Tuanov. Body kick for Gazzani. I like Tuanov's jab to set things up. But you can see Gazzani slowly stalking, walking forward. Landed some good knees. Yeah, Gazzani finally gets some offense to land. And two and off. At least the body language showing that he's... Well, that body language tells you he got hit below the belt. But Gazzani had two and off backing up. That's what he needs to do. Gazzani fought his way to the top of the Brazilian rankings. He's the current... WGP champion there in Brazil, and that's what got Glory's attention. Signed him to a contract, started out his pro career at Glory 70 Leon with a win over Michael Palandre, who's a very talented fighter. Yeah. I mean, he, Gazzani has even spent time in Holland training with Semi Schilt about a year ago. Let's see this shot. Oh, maybe a knee. Yeah, coming in. And two and off still being a. He does have time to recover. It looks like he's going to need it. This crowd showing their respect for him. Yeah. Trying to will him back into this fight. Okay. And Joe, you see a lot of fighters that don't take the full time out of pride, maybe. And that's what it looks like. Maybe two and off. Did, but there's a left and a right. And he's just mad about that low blow. And Gazzani oh. says, I'll stand and trade with you. Look at Gazzani go. And that'll do it for the end of the round. 
see how they score it here. Four judges give it to two and off one for Ghazani. A couple good jabs there for the diamond. Yep, that's what he was doing well in that first round. Because he know Ghazani's coming straight forward, so he's stepping off to the left, getting that jab right down the middle. Look at the size difference in the legs, Joe. Two and off's legs look two times bigger than Ghazani's. You'll always hear power comes from the legs with good technique. If you know how to use your hips and, and torque your weight and transfer the power, that's where you get good, solid punching power from. All in the legs. Head punches two and off 25, landed for 16 for Ghazani. Will they call that a knockdown? No. Fight! Kazani is finding his knees, though. Because he's walking through, trying to jam There's two and a half punches and land the knees. There's that pressure from Ghazani. And you can see, Ghazani might not have that one punch power, but he's going to hit you four, five, six times, and those cumulative blows, they add up. Good timing for Ghazani as well. Ghazani said, there may be some guys that are more skilled than me, could be stronger than me, but no fighter has more will than I do. Yep, you can see it in the way he fights. Up next, it's the heavyweights as another Brazilian is featured, Bruno Chavez. And you can just see Tuanoff will hit a 4-5 punch combination, and Ghazani does not move back at all because he wants to counter. Look at that. Ghazani just a standing target. The problem is, if Ghazani moves back, it's a little bit harder for him to counter. He'll take a shot to give one. Another Ooh, knee. I think that split him. Oh, he busted him open. We got blood coming out of the Russian. Well, I don't know if it was the knee to the nose, but Ghazani's knees, if he makes that knee upstairs, he can maybe get some good damage points. You know, it's never pretty with Ghazani, but he is so effective, Joe. He continues to land strikes, continues to walk forward. Yep, Ghazani's favorite strike is the flying knee. He says he likes to mix him up with his punches. Oh, and that body shot puts Tuanoff down. How about that from Bruno Ghazani? Four. Five. What a turn of events. Six. Smart strategy. Seven. Is Tuanoff going to get out? Okay. Oh, I think he's trying to get his mouth guard, but I tell you what, the, count. the referee gave him so much time there, and now he's getting even more as the mouthpiece is cleaned. Oh, I don't know. Joe, if he spit it out. Either way, he didn't get up at the count of 10. They'll let him continue. That's got to get, get Ghazani really fired up. Well, there's only 10 seconds left. Let's see if two enough can survive. And that'll do it for a great second round for Ghazani. Maybe he will get a knockout Ooh. or a knockdown. Incredible stuff as Tuanov lives to see the third, but just barely. And Tuanov rewarded by some very lenient refereeing there. Oh, that's and down the again. Body, yep. Done it again. The Brazilian has come to China and has really taken it right to the diamond. Five, six, seven. Hey, okay. Night. Ten. And that'll oh. do it. Ghazani with two knockdowns and a huge win. He's now 2 0 in glory with his 33rd KO. Joe, give it up for Bruno. What a performance for Ghazani. Yeah, first round went to two and off with his boxing, his level changing, sitting in the pocket, but Ghazani never taking a step back, blocking, always counter back. And in the second round, he started fighting his knees. His pressure was paying off, moving well, punching, trying to stay in the pocket, and he just grinds you out with that constant pressure. And there was that knee that he got the knockdown with, and then just continued to pressure found the punches, mixed his knees, and that's the style that we see from Bruno Ghazani. But this went to the third round, same type of style, punches to knees, this time too enough to not get off the canvas. And despite his outward appearance, Bruno Ghazani always smiling around the fighter hotel, such a great, good-spirited guy. Nice to see him on top tonight.
Final strike count, and there were those knees, Joe, 10 out of 11. Nothing else matters but the knees that finish, so Bruno Gazzani with the knees. Tim Hughes now makes it efficient. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an official time of 23 seconds of that third and final round when this fight comes to an end. 女士们、先生们，根据比赛官方判定，在第三回合二十三秒，这场比赛出现了 TKO。Your winner by technical knockout, Bruno Gazzani。掌声送给 Bruno Gazzani。The win gave Gazzani his 33rd professional knockout and first in glory. Another featherweight battle followed. Could this also end in knockout as both Dong Chang Lu and Jin Hyuk Kim were making their glory debuts? The Monkey King with the tassels. Chang Lu wearing the white gloves. Yeah, Kim feels his Whoa, boxing. Nice body kick. Yeah, okay. keep him away with the front kick. What? Lu feels like his kicks could do the work where Kim feels it's his hands. Tassels remind me a little bit of one of my favorite WWE superstars, the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. Oh, nice left hook there by Jung Hyo Kim. I like the way Lu's using his jab, circling off. Fight! Kim looking to pressure. A couple fighters have been slipping on that canvas tonight. We had a little sparring match in there yesterday. How'd I do? Did good. Your ring control was on point. Thank you. Ready? Fight! That nice front side kick yeah. to keep Kim away. It's a good distance control. But see how he threw his right straight off of it. Good strategy. The monkey kick trying to Whoa! get... Oh! Big right hand for Jin Hyuk Kim. And down goes Dong Chong Lu. Yep, Kim said it's his boxing. He said he was going to get the KO in the third round. But he found that shot early. The crowd trying to rally around Chong Lu. There's that side kick again oh. to the head that time. But this South Korean is coming right after him. That's a slip. Good head movement. Kim wants the pressure to get inside that side kick. Relentless pressure from the monkey kick. Lu needs to be careful. He's throwing with his hands down and his chin up. That's why he got caught with that big shot. Jin Hee Yook Kim, 26 wins by KO, 43 victories overall. The crowd liking that one. I like the way Kim is moving his head, getting it off center line, and then ripping those punches. He's trying to shell up in the corner. Do you like that defensive tactic? Well, not really. <laughs> I mean, Lou's Thanks, got to Joe. kind of move around, get away. But what I do like is the way Kim is angling to try to get his punches. What a performance so far for Kim. Yep, that head movement to get on the inside. Really solid work. Oh, another left hand. I'm not sure why Lou has his hands so low. Yeah, because I feel like he wants to use his kicks at distance, and Kim has the perfect plan right now. He's still rattled, Joe. I'm not sure he's going to make it in the final 23 seconds. Kim with some hard left hooks. Oh, now to the body. Just looking for a way in. Any port in a storm now for Dong Chang Lu trying to survive here. Oy. Boy, that just missed. There's that monkey guy. Fight. Oh my. So Dong Chang Lu lives to fight the second round, but he is in no condition right now, at least, to make any sort of comeback. He's just running away with his hands down. Yeah, Jin Hyuk Kim. Very impressive first round, really exciting fighter to watch. Came in, got it really aggressive with his hands, and just what a nice overhand right. Right on the button, through the left hook. You just see him wanting to get aggressive. You see Kim slip a little bit, but trying to get that boxing is Kim. Trying to be strategic and setting up that power. He's not just unloading the punches, he's kind of setting them up, trying to find the openings taking slight angles to try to find that left hook. Solid, beautiful first round from Jin Hyo Kim. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Cutting off the tassels. <laughs> Not sure if the referee asked him to do that or he's struggling with the loss of blood flow. Not sure what's going on right now in the corner of Lou. It looks like they're taking the tape off. They called it off. And that will do it. I don't know what went on in the corner there, but it is a victory for Jen Hyo Kim. It'll go down as a TKO, his 27th. He's looks like he's gonna do a backflip. Whoa! Oh. All entertainment all the time, and what a glory debut by the Monkey King. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. Our white corner fighter sustained an injury to his right hand, was unable to come out to answer the bell for the second round. So this one will come to an end with an official time of three minutes of that first round and end by technical knockout. Your winner by technical knockout, Jin Hyuk Kim. With the win, the Monkey King gets career victory number 44 and 27th by way of knockout. When we return to Rewind, top-ranked lightweights Josh Johnson and Stoyan Koprovlenski battle in a rematch with title implications. Then later on, the lightweight title is on the line between Marat Gregorian and third-ranked Elvis Gashi. In a rematch from Glory 52 Los Angeles, fourth-ranked Josh Johnson was looking to make it two in a row over fifth-ranked Stoyan Koprovlenski, with the winner moving one step closer to a title shot. Joe, who do you give the edge to in this rematch? Well, I mean, it's it's tough to, to call, but I gotta say Chuck. Josh Johnson. Chuck. I mean, Chuck. having won the Come first on. fight, really? his a little fight. bit more activity we've seen lately. But Copper Linsky, like I keep saying, always improving. The first fight was a split decision win for the Canadian, Josh Johnson, who's wearing the white gloves, Copper Linsky in the black. Yep. First fight, you know, Copper Linsky did well with his pressure, kept coming forward where Johnson used his jab and his low kicks. It seems like tonight he's attacking the Cavs. Johnson, born in London, England, moved to Vancouver, Canada at three years old with his family. His father set up the World Kickboxing Academy gym. His father was a great kickboxer in his own right. His father, Vince, in his corner along with his brother, Jay. Oh, Pravlinski with the pressure. John C. moving, trying to chop the legs. How similar are their styles? Well, I mean, I think they're they're great because they can both kick and box really well. And I mean, that's why it's a, a fun fight. They both know how to use great distance control, mix their strikes well. They both like to attack in combinations. That's what made that first fight so exciting. Stoyan trying to check the kick there. A lot of fighters choose to not even check kicks anymore, Joe. They'll just eat them. Not always the best strategy. Depends who you're fighting. Right hand lands there for Johnsy. Yeah, but Johnsy's low kicks are all below the knee. He likes that calf kick. Good counter and combination work there from Stoyan. Fight! There's the corner of Koprovinsky. Normally, Big Mike Passenger is in the corner. But not tonight. Koprovlinski now doing a good job at reading John C's low kicks and just slipping out of the way and then countering. Back to the 
Chauncey very, very familiar with the Asian culture. When he was younger, Joe, he trained and fought in Thailand. As soon as he could, he became a plumber, raised money, and went and trained over in Holland. He's done everything he could possibly do to be prepared and ready for the professional fight scene. Matt Koprovinsky from Bulgaria. He ended up going to Mike's gym, so both guys have experience training in Holland. Johnson back to that low cap kick, trying to go upstairs, changing levels. Could come down to this third round. Sometimes those corner guys get real brave with those little <laughs> slaps and points, don't they? That, personally, I wouldn't like it. But maybe that got me mad, and maybe I'd fight a little bit more aggressive. Who knows? I'll try it next time I see you. No, I'm good. It won't end well for you, that's for sure. <laughs> fight! All right, third round, and it feels like it's anybody's fight at this point. Who do you give the edge to? Well, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm going one round apiece. I mean, I felt John C. just did enough with those calf kicks and effective movement in one, and Stoyan seemed to kind of be a little bit more busy in that second, so it's going to be up to this third round in my eyes. Usually there's a point in the fight where Jauncey laughs for a little while. Ooh. Reconnects or gets hit, actually. I'm waiting for that to come. Looks like blood coming out of his nose right now, though. Yeah, in, the, in the second round, Jauncey wasn't low kicking, and now the corner must have told him, you got to start going back to those low kicks. Not many people enjoy fighting more than Josh Jauncey. He, he'd fight six, seven times a year if he could. 2.12 to go. Good push kick there from Johnson. Back to that inside low kick for Johnson. Trying to slow down the boxing of Koprilinski with those kicks. Both of these guys getting tagged with low kicks. Imagine if you're Johnson or Koprovinsky for that matter, but more so Johnson, and you got to sit on a plane as the mouthpiece comes out. You got to sit on a plane for 22 hours with those legs banged up. They've done it before. But it feels better going home with those swollen legs when you won, that's for sure. Yeah. There's the moment. There we go. I knew it would come. You got it. You got it. As if on cue. Stoyan now feeling a sense of urgency, perhaps. These guys could fight 20 rounds and there wouldn't be much distance between them. Yeah, this is almost the fight I'd like five rounds of, you know? It's because I think it's the later rounds where these guys can get more effective. You can really see who can start dominating. Nice right hand for Johnsy. Kalpravinsky answers with a low kick. Ooh. The front kick fight. there for Johnsy. Yeah, he's, he's getting more comfortable with the kick fighting. You see him chopping away now, blocking the kicks of Kalpravinsky. Question mark kick just misses for the Canadian. It seems to be the kick fighting is the difference in this round. Kopravinsky coming off a win over Mohamed Jiraiya. That fight was stopped because of a cut. It was a great battle there in the third round. Kopravinsky brings, brings the heat. Johnson winning the visual battle here in the third round. Yeah, it's the kick fighting. The cameras has to be a little slippery. Everyone keeps falling down. Kopravinsky made there. Oh, gave he it gets back. his own little front yeah. kick down. Fight. Gave it back. Oh, you could hear the corner call yeah. for the rolling thunder. I thought he was saying, watch out for the rolling thunder. Either way, another very close battle between Josh Johnsey and Stoyan Kopravinsky. We welcome you back here to Shenzhen, and here are the highlights from this highly competitive affair. Yeah, highly, you know, technical as well. You know, both guys mixing their strikes really well, punch to kicks. You know, Stoyan coming, trying to mix the spinning back fist. Johnsey using good movement. But as one threw a good combination, the other one always had a nice answer back. In the second round, we saw Kopravinsky seem to get a little bit more comfortable, try to find his boxing, his pressuring coming over. But Johnson using that inside low kick to try to take the punching of power away from Kopravinsky. Round three, Johnson decided to kick fight a little bit more. Kept a high guard, kind of chopped away. 
mixed up different types of kicking styles from low kicks to question mark kicks. Getting his head just off center line. You know, this game, when it's that technical against two high level guys, it's, you know, it's a battle of inches. Here are the statistics. And maybe it's just me. These look way off for Josh Johnson, but maybe I'm wrong. 48 of 103 seems off. 90 of 218 for Stoyan Kopravinsky. Let's hear the decision now from Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, after three hard fought rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. They give us back a split decision. They score this bout 29 28. Johnson. 30, 27, Korpravlenski. And our three remaining judges also have it, 29, 28. 经过三位裁判一致判定, 28比29在黑方, 30比27在白方, 另外三位裁判给出 28比29. Your winner by split decision, Josh Johnson! 比赛结果分歧判定乔石乔安西 The Nightcrawler moves up to number one in the rankings, positioning himself for a title shot with the winner of the Marat Gregorian Elvis Gashi title fight. That comes your way next. You're watching Glory 73 Rewind from Shenzhen, China. Welcome back to Rewind. It's now time for the lightweight world title. Marat Gregorian, since finally defeating his arch nemesis Sinichai to capture the glory belt, has defended once successfully against Tijani Vistani. Now in his second title defense, he faced third ranked American Elvis Gashi, who is undefeated as a professional at 23 and 0. Gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect self at all times, obey my commands at all times. Any questions? World title fight, I expect you to fight for it. Good luck to both of you. Touch gloves, push back. Judge. Elvis Supergashi said he thinks Gregorian won't be that even tough of a challenge for him. Gregorian says, I will break Gashi mentally, I will break him physically. Five rounds for the lightweight championship of the world. Gashi's starting really heavy with that left inside low kick. You're gonna see Gregorian slowly stop, try to get Gashi against the ropes. Gashi coming off a 23 second knockout of Jay Ho, Justin Houghton. It was the fastest knockout in lightweight history. You can see that nice tight shell that Gregorian has. Straight left there for Gashi, split the guard. That yeah, made Gregorian kind of reset. Gregorian now chopping the legs. Shut down Gashi's movement. Gregorian thinks he will just wear Gashi down. Gashi thinks he can get a knockout in one of the earlier rounds. Gregorian really attacking that back leg low kick. Gregorian may be one of our most confident champions, although he doesn't exude confidence, Joe. He's the quiet assassin, isn't yeah. he? Always with that nice stoic look, you know, he's just keeps his emotions always in check. He's the guy you don't want to meet in an alley, that's for sure. I like that guy, she's being first. And I mean, if he can control his power and just kind of touch it, it may keep Gregorian at bay a little bit. Yeah, I asked you about that yesterday. You thought that maybe Gashi would be circling away and trying to counter punch. Yeah, I, that's still a good strategy. I mean, the first few rounds, I expected Gregorian to kind of take his time to slowly pressure, feel Gashi's power. But I like that Gashi's using that 1-1-2, one, one, not throwing everything with power. And you can see that, you know, Gregorian shells up for those. Both men with similar power, at least statistically. Roughly half of their wins have come by knockout. Bro. 
Goldsman slipping on this canvas. That's been the story all night, hasn't it? Gosh, he's not going to give him a chance to breathe. He just landed a nice knee. So a good start for Gashi so far. Not a lot of fireworks yet. Break! But conventional Break! wisdom says he needs to win these early rounds if he wants to take this on points. Yeah, I mean, on paper, Gregorian's got to be the favorite in rounds four and five. Yep, Gregorian focusing on that rear leg low kick. Round two scheduled for five. Nice start to the round for Gashi. Yep, it's him being active, I think, is his best strategy right now. Put that volume together. The fact that he's putting things together in combinations going well for him. Three judges scored that first round for the American as Gregorian starts to let his hands go there. I don't feel like we saw the best of Gregorian in round one. He was holding back, wasn't he? Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna hold back for these first two. Break! That's where Break. I mentioned in my keys of that championship experience. The question is, can Gashi keep this volume, constantly attacking for five rounds? And apparently, his team in New York with Joe Sampieri saying they focus a lot on their conditioning. Gashi has never lost, Joe. Hasn't really had to face a ton of adversity. Will that play a factor in this battle? Well, I mean, he, he's going to learn every second he's in here. He's going to learn so much when he's here with Gregorian. They say there's levels to this game in really any professional sport. And Gregorian is the top level. We'll find out soon if Gashi is on that same path. Gregorian going back to that rear leg low kick. See Rico Verhoeven do that a lot. Yep, I mean, the back leg doesn't get hit as much, so it doesn't take as much. Nice jab from Gregorian. There's a knee and a right hand. You even see with Gregorian. Oh, nice left for Gashi. Yeah, he just ate one. That's good counter punches. But you can see Gregorian not throwing everything with power. He waits for that opportunity to unload. But again, another good round so far for Gashi. really does struggle more against Southpaws, or has it just been the level of Southpaws that he's been facing? Well, I mean, Sinichai is, you know, one of the most difficult Southpaws to fight with the experience and as much as he throws. So I don't think it's an issue. He's knocked out many Southpaws in his 74 professional fights. Just so happened to be fighting the best. Well, it was certainly a morale booster for Gashi who lands the left hand. He said, hey, man, this guy, four of his five glory losses have come to left-handers, and that's what I am. Oh, nice little double tap jab and a straight left and another one for Gashi. Yeah, He's having boy. a great round and he just snapped Gregorian's head back. Yeah, good stop, jabs stop, and he's mixing stop. it up well. Fight! Round four. Scheduled four five. Nice shot there for Gashi. It'll be interesting to see the judges' scorecards, all five giving it to Gregorian. Yeah, it was a strong finish for Gregorian. Did the damage scores there at that last little bit of that round. Gashi has fought five rounds before, but not in this organization, not at the top level. Yeah, in fact, I this, gonna say it's this, this level. The, this is the first time he's seen a round four here in Glue. How will his stamina hold up? Break! Break! Fight! And neither man has been knocked down. But Gashi looking a little worse for wear here as Gregorian's turning it up. Yeah. yeah, Gashi needs to start circling more, just not stay in the face of Gregorian. By him circling and jabbing, he was doing well. But if he stands still like this, this is where Gregorian's going to be able to chop away. He's got to see if he can find that energy to keep moving. When you say he needs to circle away, does he need to circle to his right or to his left? Well, it's going to be to his right because Gregorian's attacking that rear leg. So it's when he anticipates the low kick, he almost Break. needs to pivot out. Break. 
take away some of that power, take away the impact. Gregorian leading in the kicks category, and it's not that close. This is professional experience here. Not a lot of mustard on those punches from Gashi, and he just ate a right hand, and he is in serious trouble here. Yeah, and I think it was the body shot from Gregorian. I think Gashi's hurt to the body right now. And he finally circles away, but it might be too late as Gregorian's got that look in his eye, down to the body, yep. uppercut, and another one. As I said, Gregorian is gonna attack the body, mix uppercuts. Gashi still fighting back. He's landing punches, but they don't have nearly the strength that Gregorian's have. This is why Gregorian's dangerous. This is pressure fighting. When he has you hurt against the ropes, this is what makes him the most dangerous. And he's in peak physical condition, and kudos to his training staff, led by Nick Hemmers. All of his fighters are always in great condition. Yeah, that Gregorian left hook to the body. It's just nasty, the way he mixes the uppercuts. Gashi has no bounce in his step at all right now. He's just shelling up against the target. Yep. Oh, one, two from Gregorian. Trying to work the body. 20 seconds to go here in the fourth. Oh, high kick just misses for Gregorian. Yeah, Gregorian, one of Gregorian's favorite strikes, the right high kick. Ten seconds left. Oh, those uppercuts just split in the guard. As unlikely as it seems, if somehow Gashi can win this fifth round, he could win the fight. We look at the totals from the judges' scores, all five giving that fourth round to Gregorian. Three judges have it even. Can Gashi muster up a minor miracle here in Shenzhen? What does Gashi need to do now, considering the level of fatigue he has? Well, I mean, his legs hurt. He's taking some big shots. I mean, at this point now, I think you should shell up. And then once you see a little pause in Gregorian after he throws, makes one good power counter shot. So you're looking for the knockout. Yeah, you have to. I mean, you don't have the conditioning to be able to put the jabs together that he was so successful with. Gregorian's closing that distance, so shell up. When the opportunity comes, rip a hard counter shot. Keep in mind, Gregorian, or Gashi for that matter, have never been knocked down. Now tan for Gashi. Break! He's landing punches, but they really aren't affecting Gregorian at all. But he's staying off the ropes, which is better in this round. He's not just sitting against the ropes, he's coming forward, he's throwing a little bit more. Well, here's the most important 90 seconds of Gashi's career. Can he find that second win? He's still in this round, Joe. Yeah, he's throwing, he's mixing well. I mean, this is where now Gregorian just pushed him back and said, that's enough. Well, his chin is there, his hands are down. Gashi playing with fire here, there's his corner. Just over a minute left, that left hook right on the chin. Oh, Gosh, you got caught rocked. again. He's definitely rocked. Oh, oh he's out. Right. Left Nichols. face down goes Gashi. Paul Nichols waves it off. And still, Marat Gregorian, the lightweight champion of the world. And I think, you know, a tougher fight than Marat Gregorian expected, but that's a champion who has experience, and he just defended his world title for the second time. He beat Tajani Vestani by unanimous decision, and he just knocked Elvis Gashi out. I mean, he's just that type of pressure fighter that will constantly wear you down, but the first round was very good for Gashi. You know, had the right strategy of staying busy with his straight punches, using his jab to set up the rear straight, and the judges gave Gashi the first two rounds. You know, nice straight lefts down the middle, but as the fight continued to go, Gregorian chopped down those rear legs, kept Gashi against the ropes, and started mixing level a little bit more intelligently. Round four is the same story. There he found that overhand right, left hook to the body. That pressure fighting and the, the mixing of strikes and levels started to really pay dividends here. 
fifth round. Gashi actually started well, but at one point, Gregorian said that was enough, pushed him against the ropes, and got that beautiful finish. Overhand right, left hook, finish. Good night. It's not a, a, a lot of times that a fight plays out exactly as you envisioned it. We said Gashi would start early and Gregorian would probably finish yeah, late. Exactly, and that's what, exactly what happened. You see here the strikes by round, three, four, and five, all Gregorian. Strike count, punches. It was Gashi who went with the boxing and Gregorian with those kicks, landing 65 of 82. Here's Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. Our referee, Paul Nichols, steps in and weighs off this contest with an official time of two minutes and three seconds of that fifth and final round. This bout ends by knockout for your winner and still lightweight champion of the world, Marat. Having gone five rounds in three of his last four fights, the Rock Gregorian slowly wore down Gashi as he dominated the championship rounds, eventually finishing off Gashi toward the end of the fifth and final round. With two successful title defenses under his belt, the list of formidable challengers is long with Johnson, Bastati, and Sinichai. That will do it for this edition of Glory Rewind, but be sure to tune in for 2019's final edition, following Glory 74, Arnhem. And don't forget to check out all things Glory on our website, glorykickboxing.com. Follow us on Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram, as well as catch up on Glory features and fights on our YouTube channel. See you next time on Glory Rewind. Oh!